In this video, we are going to see how to create and use a custom data action in Oracle Analytics. So here is an Oracle Analytics data visualization project. So you can go ahead and create a data action and it has to be of one of the four types of data actions that are supported out of the box. Uh, URL navigation, navigate to a different URL from the Oracle Analytics application. The next type of data action is the publish event, which is used when a data visualization canvas or a project is embedded into an external application. And when you want to pass data from the embedded content to the external application. The next type is analytics link, which is used to navigate to a different canvas within the same project or in another project. And finally, the HTTP API data action, which is used to connect to a REST endpoint from the Oracle Analytics application. In this video, we are going to focus on HTTP API data action. From the HTTP API data action, you can invoke any of the standard HTTP methods such as get, post, put, delete, trace. So we have a REST endpoint which gives the currency conversion rate of 1 USD in euros and Indian rupee. So this is of the type HTTP get and you can see that the response from the server is 1 USD is 0.84 euros and 1 USD is 73.24 INR. So we are going to copy this particular HTTP get method and try to invoke the same from Oracle Analytics application. So one caveat to note is the domain of the REST endpoint that we are trying to connect should be added to the list of safe domains. So in this case, api.currencylayer.com has been added to the list of safe domains. And I'm going to give a new name called currency converter. I'm going to click OK and try to invoke it from one of the bars in the bar chart. And I get a message saying that the currency converter was invoked successfully. But I'm not able to see the response from the server which actually has the currency conversion values for a USD in euros and Indian rupee. That as a user, we are not able to parse the responses coming from the server. Another limitation associated with the HTTP API is that most of the REST endpoints will be having some header parameters that needs to be passed. This might involve information regarding the username, password, authorization, or authentication tokens to identify a user to grant him access to that particular REST endpoint. So from this UI, there is no way you'll be able to pass those header parameters to the HTTP data action that we are trying to create. So we are going to see how the custom data action Extending this HTTP API is going to help us address these issues. So I have created a custom data action plugin using the data action framework and the data visualization SDK mode. I'm just going to go ahead and upload that particular data action into my Oracle Analytics application. So I'm going to go to console, extensions, upload extension, and under my the distributions folder, I'm going to choose my data action. So I'm with the project and I'm going to choose the data actions option. And when I choose the option to create new data action, when under the type, I'm going to see a new entry for my new custom data action that I upload. I've given it a name, generic HTTP API data action, since extends the HTTP API data action. I'm going to choose that. And you can see that the look and feel aspect is almost similar to the HTTP API data action. It has a HTTP method. It has a text box to enter the URL of the HTTP API. And it also has the headers, parameters that you need to send in. And in case of post request, you can send in the data to be posted to the server in the HTTP API. Now, one of the first limitations that we had was that we did not have the ability to parse the response from the server. So we're going to see if my custom data action actually solves the problem. So I'm going to go and paste the same HTTP get method for the currency conversion in the URL text box. I don't have any special header parameters for this. I'm going to leave this post parameters field to be empty. I'm going to anchor it to the sales column so that we get the sales data and find that particular equivalent in Indian rupee. I'm going to give it a new name called my data action one. And I'm going to press OK. And now I'm going to choose the first bar, let's say consumer, and the sales value is 1,722,000 US dollars. So I'm going to go right click and choose my data action one to see what is the response that I'm trying to get. You can see that 1,722,000 USDs is this much in INR. 
So we were able to get the value of the selected bar and we were able to call that particular API, get the response, and we are able to use that response to find that particular equivalent in the inutropy. For invoking the force method, we'll be using this particular online REST API tool on GoRest. And as you can see, that there is a post request which helps to create a new user in this particular platform. So we'll be using this HTTP API from our custom data action plugin. Another thing to keep in mind is when any HTTP API on GoRest is invoked, there needs to be a header parameter that needs to be passed. And this is the authorization uh, with the banner access token value. So I'm going to go to data actions and create a new data action. I'm going to create another instance of my custom data action. And I'm going to give it a name. And it's of the type post. So to create a new user, this is the URL. And I'm going to pass the headers. And the header parameters needs to be in a JSON format. And the key value is authorization. And I'm going to pass in parallel access token value. And for creating a user, we need to pass in the data to the HTTP API. And this data also needs to be passed in the JSON format. The following keys are needed in order to create a user. I'm going to give a name, an email ID, and finally the status. So I'm going to click OK. So now I'm all set to invoke the HTTP API in GORES in order to create a new user based on the values that I've just entered and invoke the go rest post request and i'm getting a status code of 200 which means that the request that was sent to the GoRest server was successful so this means that i can now go and validate if the user was actually created in that particular platform now in order to verify if the user got created there is a get user details http method it's a fake get and we're going to try to invoke this HTTP API from the browser. So I'm going to invoke the get request from the browser. And you can see that the name that I entered along with the email, gender, and status it is there, so which means that the post request that I invoked from my custom data action was able to create the user. So here is a quick overview of the code. So there are quite a few functions that need to be set up in order to create a custom data action. But when a user downloads this custom data action from the Oracle Analytics library, everything is already taken care of. The user does not have the pain to start from scratch. But there is one function that needs calling out, which is the get Ajax options. So this is the function where the request is actually getting built and sent to the server. And there are two event handlers. One is for the success event handler, which is when you get a success response from the server. And the other one is the error event handler. So in my case, when I call the currency conversion data action, I convert the US dollar equivalent in INR and display a success message. For other types of requests, I just display what is the status code. And similarly, in case of errors, I display what is the error and the reason behind. Now, this is the place where a user would want to rewrite this piece of code in order to suit their requirements. The rest, everything is completely taken care of. Thanks for watching the video.